Hey family, Chauncey Pam here, Dallas Fort Worth Realtor with Family Realty Group and EXP Realty, and I'm back with another vlog, y'all. And Spencer McDuff is here too. <laughs> Okay, as always, uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below, uh, like it, and also hit the little bell button so you're notified every time I come with one of these videos. And I apologize, guys, I have not been um, on here for a while, haven't uploaded a video for you because I've been busy as hell. Uh, my team has now grown to almost 150 agents in 20 different states. So just been super duper busy um, talking to agents, helping agents, coaching, turning, mentoring, flipping houses, selling houses. It's been a mess, um, but I'm back. And I'm back with a very special, awesome person here, Spencer <laughs> McDuffie. So guys, Spencer is a fellow EXP agent. He is here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, but he's like, we're in the country. I don't know. We we in the sticks, you know, up up in North uh, North Dallas, uh, yeah. Denison, Sherman, Lake Texoma area. That's where I work. What county is that? Grayson County. Okay, so Grayson County. So I'm in Denton County. He's in Grayson County. So a little bit more rural area, but he is killing it, like absolutely killing it. So today, want to talk to you guys just um, in, in talking to a lot of new agents. I'm I'm finding that you guys like you're totally lost. You don't know where to start. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to get deals. And Spencer has actually only been licensed for two years. And Spencer just hit a status at EXP called Icon, which is a very, very elite status that very few agents hit. Like, hell, I didn't even hit it because, man, production. Because she can't hang. <laughs> no, like, like, I don't even hit it. He did this in two years. So we're going to talk to Spencer, um, get a little bit of insight from him, um, hear a little bit about his background, and uh, just like, give you guys some insight on on what you need to do to to get in and make what a quarter million dollars 250 or so yeah that's, about, a, that's about right yeah. as a two-year agent so let's get to it so so tell me kind of like what's your background because I know a lot of you guys always tend to think really good agents have like super sales and marketing backgrounds tell these folks your background all right y'all what's going on everybody thank you so much for having me on Chauncey hey first off I want to say that uh, if you haven't got the struggle bus GPS make sure you get the Ooh, struggle bus fuck. because I watched that and it was super super fire so definitely check that out for Chauncey she's putting out the hits mm -hmm. uh, so my background is going to be in accounting so I'm not that great of an accountant which is why I'm no longer an accountant <laughs> anymore but I left accounting and now I'm in real estate I went from making about 40 to about fifty three thousand dollars a year over the course of about a five-year career my first year in real estate I did about 35 deals uh, made about hundred and sixty thousand and this year on track to do about 75 deals and on track to do about three hundred thousand GCI so uh, background accounting really wasn't for me I thought that was where the money was and that's why I went there but <laughs> it was a rude awakening that like 40 hours a week over time not getting paid for it and you know just cubicle life getting up at you know 7 30 getting to work at 8 leaving at 7 and all that busy season and, and you know, I'm out on it I'm out on it so so then you just just decided to dive into real estate did you have like a real estate background you know anybody in real estate like how did that work well, I actually worked for several real estate companies. So I worked for Lennar Homes. Um, I worked for uh, HKS Architect, which is a big architect, global architect here, but they have a location in downtown Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, no, not really. I just kind of fell into that architecture engineering world, but I was always accounting, you know, okay. doing that accounting thing. But my uh, mentor uh, was uh, Charles Edwards at, at EXP. And he told me, you know, he's like, dude, if you can't make $100,000 your first year in real estate, then you're terrible and you don't need to get into real estate in the first place. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm in. Let's try it out and see what happens. And, you know, we hit 160. So I don't know that that's true for everyone. Don't take offense, guys. Don't take offense. But um, it was true for me. And, it, and it, it was definitely hard, hard, much harder than what he let on. But it was definitely possible. So then when you first got started, so, so let's fast forward. You're done being an accountant. I'm getting into real estate. You passed your classes. You decided on your brokerage. Let's kind of start there because that's the first step, right? Like you can't even sell real estate until you have a brokerage. What made you go with EXP or did you even care? Did you just kind of go there because that's where your cousin was? To be honest, I didn't care. Uh, okay. I really didn't care. I just went, I, I trusted my cousin so much. He's been a mentor in my life for so long that if he would have told me to go to Fathom Realty, Coldwell Banker, uh, Century 21, KW, I would have went to any of those, to okay. be honest with you. But it hasn't been until I had icon status this year where I was like, oh, wow. This is uh, this is it actually <laughs> this is something. I got sixteen thousand dollars worth of stock this year, and in the next month, 
my stock doubled from $16 a share to like $45 Ooh. a share, like well over doubling. I got like $70,000 worth of stock in EXP right now. And I've only been in a company for a little while. So. Yeah, and next year you'll be fully vested. So then you'll actually be right. able to pull that out. So we'll talk about that in a whole different video. Right. So that's hot. But yeah, that's, that's, hot. Hot. <laughs> that's hot. Okay, so so then you landed at EXP. So then what's the next step? So, so now you're in, you have a brokerage. What do you do? Like, how do I get clients? Like, what's the first step? Okay, so for me, it was all about um, getting educated and figuring out what a plan, right? So we want to have a lead generation plan, and I followed my lead generation plan super, super uh, rigidly. So for me, it was Fizbo's, it was expired, and it was a sphere of influence. It, I know that sounds very cliche and basic. You hit it on any uh, video or anything like that, but it's very it's it's cliche for a reason because you're expired. They want to sell and move their you right. know and move. They've already raised their hand. They want to move. Your Fizbos, they're literally on the market right this second, so you can't really get much better than that. Right. And in your sphere of influence, those are the people who love you and trust you and, and, and want to do all that. So that's a kind of a cliche answer to a you know a question. So what did you do with them though? So like you say expires, so did you just right. call? Right. So I have a I have a, a a system that I've put into place that I've been teaching. Every lead bucket or every lead source, I use a different strategy or or I expound upon the current strategy that's cold calling. Because cold calling, as much as we want to say it's not dead, it is definitely on the downward climb. You know, on the downward decline. People don't want to get cold calls. So when it comes to my major ways that I reach out to people, I'm doing Facebook. I'm always in the DMs. If you're going after the expires, if you're going after the Fizbos, look them up on your local county site, like the Grayson County Cab or the Collin County Ooh, Cad. Nuggets. Take their take their name, copy and paste it into the Facebook search bar, find them, add them as a friend, get into the DMs, and then you know, you you methodically start to interact with their stories, interact with their posts, interact with their content. Now you're working that Facebook algorithm so that you can really get in front of them when you post because you've been engaging more. Right. I so, like that. Right. So that's a that's a powerful one. Uh, texting obviously is super powerful, but when I started off, it was very heavy cold calling and door knocking. But I've become more re refined because what I realized is that when you're calling the expires, you're calling the Fizbos. It's hard to get a hold of these people. Like not so much with Fizbos, it's easier. But with mm -hmm. expires. Uh, they don't want to talk, you know, so I got to find out where they are. And so right. if, if I have to write a letter, if I have to get on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I'm trying them everywhere. I'm not just going to call, call, call. Right. I really want to try to get in front of these people. So if I just have to drive to their house, then, you know, that's, what, that's, we that's, what's up. <laughs> that's what we're going to okay. do. So, so you, you went after Fizbo's expired and your sphere of influence and you mm -hmm. got in front of them however right. you could make right. sure that they knew what you were doing. And so then what? So then how did you know? Because I feel like a lot of agents, um, I teach them how to get over the hurdle of getting leads, right? right? Because what a lot of people don't realize is guys like you can get leads in your sleep. Hell, you can get leads right. going to Starbucks and paying for, you know, giving the, the barista $50 and saying, I'm going to pay for however many people behind me this $50 space right. for, give them my card, right? Like that can be lead generating for you. So getting leads isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. But what I find is that most agents figure out how to get them, then they don't know how to convert them right. or what to do with them or how to follow up. So then like, who taught you how to do that? Or is that something that inherently we have to have enough common sense to kind of have a baseline? Or is or was that all taught? I disagree. I don't think, okay. I think uh, I have more people skills than maybe some people have, but I don't think it's natural for me even, or for people with less people skills than me. Uh, you need to have training in my opinion to really get solid in this, in this game. Uh, you need to understand how to have the conversations about real estate. Like, so when you talk to an expired listing, it's going to be a much different conversation than when you talk to a FISBO listing, which would be a much different conversation when you talk to a move up buyer or a downsizing buyer. Right. If you don't understand the, the like the basic framework of what's going on in their head, the problems that they may be having, you're going to be really struggling to relate to them and to get them to trust you to uh, to get the job done. So I don't think that there's, I don't think it's natural unless you've been in real estate for a long time or maybe have been in sales. Coming from a background of accounting, um, you know, I, I had a coach, I, I hired a coach, I was telling Chauncey this over, where, where'd we go? M Mana, Mana Shubu yeah. with the barbecue? Mana Shabu. We, we went to Mana Shabu and it was great. That's uh, what's on his shirt right there. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Um, so I had a coach, and so if there's a script, you know, you pretty much rattle it off to me. Like I can, pre I can pretty much tell you exactly what to say, what to do, how to act, where to be, what time, because I'm very, very scripted in my approach. And I will be honest with you guys, it's not something that you need forever, but in the beginning, you gotta have a framework and you gotta know what to say because, as my coach from Tom Ferry says, what you say matters. Right. I agree. Um, would you agree with this? 
I feel like the reason that a lot of agents, though, while you say there does need to be some training and all of that going on, would you agree with the fact that the reason people need that training, though, is they have a hard time understanding what their job is? I would agree. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of confusion about what an agent's job is. Uh, I mean, what do you think? I mean, here's an analogy that I always give to agents when they get a lead and then they call me and say, oh, my God, I don't, I don't know what to say. I tell them this. I said, look, if I said, Spencer, I want to make us dinner. Right. Go to the store. What do you need? <laughs> if all I say is go to the store, then you're going to be like, all right, well, what the hell do you need? What right. are you cooking? How much of it are you cooking? Uh oh. Oh, we got the hot tip. Oh. Okay, so we're back. The camera shut off because we're in a hot ass car and it's hot ass Texas and Spencer's sweating and I'm sweating. So, right. anyway, um, what I was saying is, is you know, again, if, if I ask you the question, hey, Spencer, go to the store, I'm going to cook you dinner, go to the store, you inherently know without anyone having to teach you what questions to ask because right. you know that your goal is to go to the store to get me to cook dinner, right? right. So then you know what missing information there is. Right, what do you need? What do you need? How much of it do you need? Um, what ingredients do you need? Do you, do you have any dietary restrictions? Is right. there a particular store you want me to go to? What time do you want to cook? What time do you want to cook? <laughs> Whose house are you cooking at? Like, right. like these are common sense questions. They are, they are. Like, and it's a great analogy, it really is. And, and I feel like agents, have a hard time figuring out what to say because they think that their job is to be like a walking brochure and to provide information right. when the most important part of their job is asking the right questions. That's a, an amazing analogy, even better probably than the one that I could have or would have made. I think a lot of agents have this, uh, I think a lot of agents don't realize that they're in sales, which, oh. I think, which I think is a lot of what Chauncey's saying. Like sales, when you boil it down, is really just a discovery of information and then using that information to influence people in a way that benefits them. Correct. Uh, not in a way that benefits you, uh, but but in a way that gets them from point A to point B, which is what everybody wants to do or they wouldn't be talking to a real estate agent. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So then let's kind of fast forward. You implemented some systems to do some expired, some FISBOs. You mm -hmm. you creeped on people and stalked them in, in Facebook and, and on social media. I did So creep. that is that is a really good tip there. I'm a really good creep. <laughs> on Facebook. I, I will find you in 30 seconds or less. What would you say <laughs> though separates the agents like you that are able to sell 75 houses a year versus those that have been licensed for two years just like you and have never sold a deal? For me, it's very uh, it's very simple. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm a big Mike Ferry and Tom Ferry guy. You know, so I know not everybody on your channel probably appreciates or likes that approach. But I'm a very regimented, disciplined, and scripted kind of a person. When someone says, "Hey, I need to think about it," I know two or three different things that I can say. Well, what do you need to think about? Usually, when my clients need to think about something, it's usually the price, is the commission, or is me. Now, Chauncey, seems like we're getting along. Do you not like me? Right. Is it, is it me to say right. you? Right. Okay. Oh, no. So, <laughs> right. So normally I'm going very, very scripted in my approach, but I'm, I, I was very, very heavy into doing uh, scheduling. So eight to eight to 12, I'm prospecting, I'm cold calling, text messaging, Facebooking, DMing, creeping, however you want to say it. That was what I did. And then I also compounded that with Facebook, which my Facebook approach is a lot like Chauncey's YouTube or, or her Facebook. It's very content driven, entertainment driven. And over time that really has started to pay off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in, in the beginning it was, there wasn't anything Slow. really that was different. I think most agents, and you talk to when you talk to the expires and the fizzbos, they will tell you why their last agent was not good or why they don't don't want to work with the agent. They'll say my agent never communicated with me. He never called me. He put a sign in the ground and, and never got back to me. And you know he didn't know what he was doing and he didn't <laughs> present. And all I mean, they'll tell you straight up. They they, they, they don't have any filter. So they if will. you're if you're wondering what agents suck at, call an expired and ask them. Hey, what did your last agent suck at? And they'll they'll go on and you on. You know something that I that I <laughs> I do when I talk to people, um, buyers or sellers, I ask this one question. And this question unlocks all the information that I need, which is if I could wave a magic wand, how would all of this play out for you? So if I'm talking to a right. seller, it's hey, you know, if I could wave a magic wand, like how much money would you walk away with? Um, you know, how fast would we sell your house? Like, like I know you have an idea in your brain of how you want this all to look. So just just give that to me. Right. And guys, I find that when you you give them that and you, you ask that question, it's almost like asking somebody, what would you do if you won the lottery? Yes. Right? Like yeah. everybody wants to give you right. all of the I wanna, information. I want a cash offer. Five, yeah. 500,000, you know, I want a three month lease back <laughs> <laughs> and a vacation. <laughs> yes. But at least you know what their expectations are and then you take that, package it and sell that shit back to them. 
is, right, is right. ultimately what we're doing. And you're really good at it because you're a natural, but a lot of people are not naturals. And this was not taught to me. I didn't pick this up as a natural. Okay. Finding out what someone's motivation is, finding their perfect result and selling it back to them, it can be taught systematically if you're not a natural person. But that's what I use, what, what separates me apart when I'm battling against other agents is that I learned it systematically. You knew it from either a past life or just being very talented. But you can find all of this stuff out and there's scripts out there for you if you're looking for a pre-qualification call. You know, hey, you know, what are you looking for in the agent that you choose? Um, you know, in a perfect world, if everything makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can get the job done, are you ready to go ahead and sign the listing agreement when I come out tomorrow at 5 o'clock? Oh, that's script. You know, I know you said that like, <laughs> I can tell by the way you spit that out. You have said that to you like know, 250 I times. I have, I have, but we're not like, ah, oh, well, you know, we don't know. You know, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, tell me more about that. And, and so really, if you can learn, like, like just like what she said, your job is to sell and you can't sell if you don't know what the problem is that the person's having. You need to discover their issue and then you need to sell it to them before you sell it to anybody else. And and that is, um, I, I cannot remember the name of the book. If I can remember the name of the book, I'll, I'll like add it up here or something or like down in the description. <laughs> but there was a book that I read that was like <laughs> sales strategies. And one of the things that they said in the book, which made total sense, is that no matter how good your strategy is, no matter how good your pitch is, no matter how cheap you make a product um, or what your value proposition is, if there is no problem, there is no sale. Right. And your job is to figure out what the problem is, figure out what that solution needs to look like and sell it back. And I think that's something you've done really well in your last two years, obviously, because you're <laughs> selling an obscene amount of houses. So then, um, I don't know, we can kind of wrap up here. Let's give me a couple of like, takeaways some things that you would like advise to new agents that like when they first get started things they like, have to do things they shouldn't do right. like like tell me all of the things well man that's a big question i would say when you get started you really need a mentor and some people may not agree some people would disagree but if you go to my youtube channel which is not nearly as big as chauncey's but, but you go, go, to, go to mine and one of the first videos i ever make was called should you hire a real estate coach and i firmly believe that you should and everybody's entitled to their own opinion obviously but to have someone especially when you're a brand new agent you need someone to tell you hey you didn't pre-qualify that seller or hey your listing presentation is trash or hey <laughs> why, why did you not overcome this objection when they said they want to think about it and you didn't know what to say there's, there's somebody that's been through all of this stuff before and if there's one single thing that you can do it's having someone who's been through it before who can really give you some good advice who you can play back to your coach or whoever and say hey this is what happened this is why I didn't get the listing or this is why I didn't get the deal oh yep. we lost it again all the things all right, he forgot what he was saying, but you were giving all the things, right? Because we went oh, hot again, the, by the way. We all the hot. things, yeah. But I, I was giving all the things. I think one, get a coach, get somebody who has been through there and who can give you a, a tips and advice. Guys, we are in the business of sales. This is not HGTV. You need to know how to close <laughs> uh, objection handling, uh, listing presentations. You need to be very skilled. You need to be very a smooth talker, in my opinion. You need to know what to say because this is not just like, you. Like yes, you can go out and show homes, but you gotta get the clients. And the clients don't trust you, they don't know you, they don't like you. You need to know what to say, how to change that. So get a mentor that can, that can help you with that. The only other thing that I'm super big on right now, apart from getting a mentor, is uh, Facebook and social media yes. is just, it is just ridiculously amazing. If you are struggling with social media and with Facebook, spend at least 40% of your time, and I say 40 because 60% should be on your fist buzz expires and your sphere of influence. Prospecting. Prospecting when you're brand new. But on the flip side, for those first three years, get damn good at being on Facebook, Instagram, and social media because we're talking about a scalable prospecting model where you can sleep and wake up to listing calls. I literally sleep and wake up to bookings of agents typically. Pick Johnsy's brain, which you can do down below. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I mean, I get listing appointments that way and buyers that like legit just based on my social media presence and guys understand that what he just said with the social media thing, it's scalable and it takes time to grow. Um, we were just talking about this when we were in at lunch. I started my YouTube channel in 2017 and guys, when I was pumping out my first couple of videos, they would get seen by like 10 people. It would get like 15 views. And I was like, why am I doing this? And fast forward three years later, you know, now I've got thousands of subscribers and, and it actually is the cornerstone of my business in terms of the consumers that are coming at me that are buyers and sellers as well as agents um, that I'm building out this nationwide team with. So um, you have to be consistent. You have to, to make sure that people know who you are. And, and remember with social media that it is social media, not selling media. Right. So it's very, very important to kind of like show people who you are and like 
when I call it's like making online friends. So right, it, friends. it is social networking. It yeah, is, it's it called, is. It's, it's like remove the word social from it. It's still networking. Right. It's the same thing. Uh, and so, if you want to see a YouTube channel done incorrectly, go to mine, <laughs> and then go to Chauncey's. But where I have a lot of my success, I don't think you have to kill all the birds with no, one stone. No, you're good on Facebook, like, man. I do very well on Facebook, very and well. I get a lot of business. A lot of my videos get two, 3,000 views on Facebook. Yeah. I get a lot of reach there, and I get a lot of clients from there. But, you know, it, it, it's same concept on every platform. It is. It really is. And then I guess we can kind of wrap up um, and just... One last thing that I've noticed with a lot of new agents are struggling with kind of like looking at everything. Like Spencer has a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel. Like all of these agents, you know, fly guys out here, they're on HGTV. Like guys, <laughs> believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. Um, and stay in your own lane. Stop comparing yourself to others. You will have your own journey. You'll have your own climb. Just because Spencer is superhuman and he sells a bajillion houses a year does not mean that in your second year that you are not doing well if you're not selling 75 houses a year. Hell, I've never sold 75 houses in a year <laughs> and I do pretty well for myself. So um, She does better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do a lot of other things. I do a lot of you other know. things. Um, but I mean it, it really like just make sure that you stay in your own lane like would you agree with that that like I would I would say unless unless comparing yourself to other truly fuels you and I'm talking to the, the football players the basketball players the volleyball players the, the right. weightlifters the real athletic people and with the brains of athletes who are like okay you ran the 40 and 4-2 I've run it in 3-9 and you have that posted on your wall for three years <laughs> while you train like if that's you then cool if not it really doesn't matter like your hundred thousand dollars versus my hundred thousand dollars versus his six hundred thousand dollars like bro there's hundreds of thousands of dollars for all of us to be making <laughs> like eat and do it all in your own space which that may not even be your goal you know like right. like, like have your goal in mind when you get going and, and i think that that is kind of the most important part so did you have anything else to add for these lovely folks i would say no i don't thank you for having me on <laughs> well how can they find you guys go and find spencer because he's legit go and find, go him. find me at facebook.com uh spencer b as in boy mcduffie Instagram, Facebook, I'm most uh, active. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, YouTube uh, is always good. And feel free to DM me or call me anytime. I'm always happy to be a resource for you guys. Uh, if you need help with anything at all, just let me know. I'll be, I'll be there for and you. And he's a fellow EXPer. That's right. And That's right. if you would like to link up and learn more about what he's doing and how he's been able to achieve it, and you would like to possibly join his group, get some mentoring, some coaching training, He's available. Yes, so. I am available. I am available. <laughs> so, so let's get that plug. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's been awesome chatting again. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, let me know other things that you guys want to see, and I will be back next week with another lovely video. Peace.